we so often deal with molecules in their ground states that it's easy to forget that excited states have absorption spectra too. For example, an S1 state can be excited to S2, S3, and beyond, and we can see those absorptions, assuming we can design an experiment where we have a high enough concentration of the excited state. We get rid of background absorption from S0, which is a very common situation that we need to deal with, and we're measuring over the right wavelengths to observe these transitions, which tend to be lower in energy than S0 to S1 transitions. The measurement of the absorption spectrum of a short-lived species such as an excited state is called transient absorption spectroscopy. The absorption spectroscopy bit is fairly obvious. We are measuring the wavelengths associated with transitions from an excited state to higher energy levels. And the transient bit is really the important piece here. We're referring to a transient species such as an excited state which is around for a very short period of time. In fact, in the video on flash photolysis, we saw how that technique can be combined with transient absorption spectroscopy to generate a high concentration of the excited state and measure its absorption spectrum. So really the foundational insight of transient absorption spectroscopy is simply that excited states have spectra and we can measure those spectra with an appropriately designed experimental setup to generate what we might call a transient absorption spectrum. A typical transient absorption instrument looks something like this, and it's got some clever design quirks to ensure that we can both generate a high concentration of the excited state and measure its absorption spectrum at the same time. So we have a pump pulse. This, as we've seen, generates the excited state, generates the transient species that we're interested in measurement. We actually don't care what happens to that pump pulse light, so that simply hits this iris. We have a separate white light probe beam that is at an angle to the pump pulse, and that is allowed through to a diffraction grating that then takes the light onto a de detector. There is a time delay that we're gonna call delta T between the pump pulse and the probe. And the reason for this is that the excited state needs some time to form, and if we're interested in some transient species derived from the excited state, we want to allow that to form before we initiate our probe pulse. And of course, the pump pulse won't excite every molecule in our sample, and so we'll end up with a mixture of the ground and excited states. The spectrum we end up getting when we do the probe will be a mixture of the ground and excited state spectra, and to isolate just the excited state spectra, we need to take some special care. So for example, in a typical transient absorption experiment, we're looking at the change in absorbance relative to the simple ground state spectrum when we do the experiment this way with a pump pulse preceding our probe. The overall measured signal might look something like the black signal, and we may get the idea that any dip in absorption is due to depletion of the ground state, and any increase in absorption is due to absorption by the excited state, and that's part of the story. Excited state absorption is part of the story that's shown here as this lighter solid line, and that contributes positively to this delta A since the excited state is absorbing at this wavelength. As the ground state is depleted, we have what's called a ground state bleach. If the ground state absorbs at this wavelength, that absorbance will decrease due to depletion of the ground state by the pump pulse. That needs to be thrown into our analysis of the measured signal. And then finally, there's this issue of stimulated emission. When we kick molecules from the ground to the excited state, we alter the populations of the ground and excited states away from equilibrium, we are stimulating the emission of a photon at those wavelengths as well. This sends additional light at the same wavelength as the incident probe light through the iris, which lowers our apparent absorption and creates a decrease in the signal as represented by this dotted line right here. So stimulated emission has a negative effect on delta A as well. Ground state bleach and this stimulated emission effect are really the reasons why we observe an overall negative signal for delta A. This may seem strange, right, because we're exciting the sample. This should generate a new absorption spectrum such that when we subtract out the background, we expect positive delta A, right, positive changes in absorptions but the ground state bleach and stimulated emission effects have a negative effect that is often dominant. What we're truly interested in here is the excited state absorption spectrum. To find that, we take the measured signal and we subtract out all the dotted lines, essentially, to isolate this lightly colored solid line that is the absorption spectrum of our species of interest, of the transient species.
So that last slide showed us how we can isolate the absorption spectrum of a transient species such as an excited state. We're often interested in the time dynamics or the kinetics of that excited state, and that's where time resolved TAS comes in. We get information about the dynamics, for example, measuring the change in absorbance at a specific wavelength, here two wavelengths are plotted, as a function of time. And here the delay time is the delay between the pump and probe pulses that we saw in the last slide. This particular example comes from this paper and studies of this molecule right here, which includes a core of this zinc 2 plus atom surrounded by this ligand. This is a thallocyanine core, we might say, right here. And that core is connected to an appendage that is a carotenoid. This resembles beta carotene. The two traces on the graph follow the transients associated with the thallocyanine and the carotenoid. So this curve right here shows the generation of PC star at low delay. At low delay time, we're still seeing generation of the excited state at a few picoseconds, followed by relatively slow decay of PC star as it transfers its energy to the carotenoid. This was used as evidence for an energy transfer process from PC star to the carotenoid portion, portion of the molecule. The trace at 480 nanometers follows the carotenoid excited state, which is generated very quickly and quickly decays after it's received energy from the thallocyanine excited state. The interesting conclusion that we can draw here is that PC star can repeatedly transfer energy to the carotenoid portion, which very quickly dissipates that energy through a process that only takes you know, about 10 picoseconds or so. So these transient absorption spectroscopy experiments, again, just to conclude, can give us some detailed information about the dynamics of excited states by probing the absorption properties of the excited state itself, of the transient species.